Welcome to Biostock Studio. Today we do a news follow-up with Sereno Scientific, who develops treatments for cardiovascular diseases. Welcome, Stenar Sorensen, your CEO. Thank you. You just announced the results from the Phase 2A trials of your candidate, and so we wonder what are the results? Well, we are super excited about our uh, data out of this Phase 2 trial. Um, so we met our primary endpoints, uh, we, that's safety and tolerance. And in addition, we harvested uh, in our experimental data set on efficacy, very encouraging and compelling data. So uh, we are moving ahead to, with, uh, on our regulatory path uh, towards our next and hopefully pivotal trial with this compound. Also what we saw in this study was that we believe we have consistent impact on disease modification in these patients. And I'll maybe explain a little later what that means. But that's a pioneering effort that we are doing at Sereno. Mm, big news and happy news. I mean, of course, this is a positive news, but can you tell us a little bit more about what does this mean for your company? Yeah, so safety and tolerance is what you need to get in a phase two trial, uh, phase two A. And um, what you also need to get is uh, impact on these patients. So this is a rare disease, pulmonary arterial hypertension. And the treatment goals is to reduce the risk for the patient. So basically have a possibility to extend survival. And the other treatment goal is to improve physical capacity and that's measured uh, as functional class improvement. The third objective that you also want to do is to have impact on hemodynamic parameters such as pressure, the mean pulmonary pre arterial pressure in the lung arteries and as a result also impact on pulmon pulmonary vascular resistance of your treatment if you can and that resulting in an improved function of the heart often measured as stroke volume and then eventually as cardiac output. So the heart's ability, the right heart's ability to pump blood to the lungs so they can be oxygenated the blood and the person can function better. Since we are talking about the, the disease and what does it do in the body, can you also explain a bit, I mean, what could this potentially mean for patients with this disease? Yeah, so if you're diagnosed with this disease, you have, uh, historically, you had two and a half years to live if you didn't get a lung transplant. Now, with all available treatment and uh, different uh, therapeutic agents, that has been dis extended to seven years, approximately. And those uh, agents are still, you know, old style, so they're uh, dilating the vessels, vasodilators. And uh, now the whole focus and movement within this field is for these patients to get therapies that can address the root cause of the disease. So what is happening? Well, in these patients, you have a pathological change of the pulmonary arteries, so a pathological remodeling. The arteries get stiffer and more narrow. So the right heart has a difficulty to pump through this narrow tube of the blood vessels. What you would like to do is that you would like to impact this progressive development of the narrowing of the arteries and then uh, the weakening of the right heart. And what you have to do to do so, you have to have a drug that is impacting that progression. And we believe very strongly that we have that. We have seen that we ha are doing prevention and reverse remodeling in animal work. And actually, we released just the week before our top line data, very encouraging data on our second HDAC program that we impact vessels both on fibrosis and in plexiform lesions, which is really the target that you want to address. You just mentioned uh, the disease-modifying impact of CSI. Could you explain what that means? So the disease-modifying impact is actually to um, prevent the progression of this change of the arteries and also, if you can, reverse this. What will happen then is that you will reduce the pulmonary vascular resistance, the resistance towards the blood flow. Uh, and if you reduce that, the heart will be able 
to work better, so the right heart will be able to pump blood better. And actually, what we have seen then in our study is that we have reduced pulmonary vascular resistance remarkably in the best responders in this trial. So five, so about 25% of the patients, five out of 21, got an improvement of 35 to 50% reduction of the pulmonary vascular resistance and a corresponding increased stroke volume, which is the volume that the right heart can pump through the lungs. Uh, so we see that we both reduce the vascular resistance significantly here, and we also then, as a correspondence, see a better pumping heart, and that's fantastic. Thank you for explaining that. So with this big news, you also released the news that you will, uh, you just signed an agreement with the comp medtech company Fluida. Um, what value does this collaboration bring to you? Well, uh, I, let me first uh, add a couple of things about the efficacy data that we saw, if I yeah, may. Yeah, of course. And, and, and then come back to Fluida. So, so we saw this impact both on in, in two-thirds of the material, we saw a reduction of mean pulmonary arterial pressure as measured with this technology that we have implanted in collaboration with Abbott that can measure the blood pressure in the arteries every day. Mm -hmm. So two-thirds of the patients got a reduction there of these. This short study, it's only 12 weeks. Uh, in addition, as I mentioned before, you'd like to help the patients to reduce the risk score it's a tool that's used in, that includes six-minute walk distance and 20 other parameters. If you can reduce this risk score from where it was when you are enrolled in the trial to at the end of, of therapy or, or as you move forward with one point, you, that corresponds to, if you can do that, and which we did, in 43% or 9 out of the 21 patients, we reduced the risk score with one point. That point means translates into 23% reduction of risk of death within 12 months. So we, in this short trial, did that for 43% uh, of the patients. Wow. In addition, what you want to do is you want to improve the physical capacity as a, as a doctor for these patients. And there are four functional classes. One is you don't feel, that's class one, you don't feel. You're just diagnosed with this disease, you have high pressure in the lungs. The fourth is you can't move, you're be bedridden. There are two classes in between, functional class two and three. In this study, we have 15 patients in functional class three and two patients in functional class two. What, what happened during these 12 weeks, that we improved in 33% of the patients, so seven patients, we moved them to a better class. So we moved several patients from a functional class three to two and from two to one. So that's also fantastic. So beyond this hemodynamic resistance improvement and heart function improvement, we reduced score and we increased physical capacity. Now, yeah. let me get to Fluida. So, um, Based on the data we have preclinically that we both prevent and re reverse remodeling, pathological remodeling, and then the data we got last week on our new HDAC program that we impact plexiform lesions and fibrosis in the lungs, uh, and then the resulting PVR improvement and stroke volume improvement here in this trial, we have decided to move on because we're super excited about what our drug is doing here in these pulmonary vessels. So there is a cutting edge technology. Again, we love to work with cutting edge technologies. So Fluida is a CT scan method uh, that the company has and they're active in lung diseases. And they, this technology, you can measure how the vessels in the pulmonary arteries change over time. And the beauty of this collaboration is that we will be able to use this now and study our compound on impacting these structures over long term because several of our patients that are in the compassionate use program that was approved by FDA will be included in this trial and we will see the impact of our drug long term on these vessels in man next year.
That is very interesting to go from the 12 weeks to see now on a exactly. distance. Exactly. So beyond the clinical yeah. parameters in the compassionate use program, so most studies are done six months or longer in, in therapy. We did a 12 week and we saw these really nice data. Now with the compassionate use program that FDA approved, the patients will be able to use our drug uh, a year or longer. Mm. So we will study long-term therapy and also with this best specific technology and cardiomems, <laughs> which is still implanted in these patients. Mm. Big releases, huge milestone, of course. So now the obvious question is, what is next? Yes, so next, uh, you know, the, the final analysis of the study uh, is ongoing. Uh, and we expect that uh, uh, report to be done and then we will uh, schedule our meetings with FDA and uh, European authorities to discuss the report and as well our uh, eventually our study design that we propose to do, which we believe will be a 2B3 trial, a pivotal trial to approve the drug for usage in man to everyone. Now only compassionate use patients can use it. So that's the first and we hope to get that study approved by regulatory authorities by H1 next year, so uh, first half. So that's the first point. The second is that we have an ongoing program with our second HDAC program, uh, CSO 14, and that's in man, so that's phase one, and that's uh, we have a target to have that done by the summer, so end of uh, Q2. Uh, and then, of course, we have the third program, uh, CS585, which has seen so promising data in uh, prevention of thrombosis without increasing bleed. So that's also going to uh, go on next year and complete talk studies, etc. Mm. If we come back again to your first candidate, uh, CS1, studies cost money. Do you have the funds to take the next step? Well, you, so we have previously communicated that we have funds into the next year, which is still the case. So, uh, and of course, when we are going to start these trials, eventually we need more capital than we have in the, in the company now. So that's for sure. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll come back to that question as we move on. Naturally. Okay, so you already mentioned the, the next developments for the three different projects you have. Do you have any other milestones that you as a CEO are really excited about in the coming future? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, of course, we are all eyes we feel are on Sereno now. Uh, so we have, you know, we're talking to uh, potential partners, which we have been doing for a while, but I believe that will be intensified as we move on uh, during the next months. Uh, so that's one key aspect of, of uh, Sereno. And uh, otherwise, I think what we love to do is interact with the uh, uh, the industry, with the finance sector, and of course with our shareholders, our current shareholders. So we have communicated also Monday that we will have a Capital Markets Day coming up on the 17th of October. It will be live streamed from Posthuset in Stockholm. So you will be able to be there if you're early in, in uh, letting us know. But you can also stay at home and, and look at the web. We will have guest speakers, which we will announce later in the program and so on, but we are very much looking forward to that. And we will, of course, be at partnering conferences throughout the fall and spring. You will have a busy spring and year to come before you. Thank you so much, Stena Sørensen, for joining us here in Biostock Studio. Thank you. It's a pleasure always.